Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com. Today I'd like to show you how to use a Leviton AFCI GFCI receptacle to protect your kitchen circuits from arc faults that could cause fires and from ground faults that could cause shocks. It will fulfill code requirements for areas of the home which now require both AFCI and GFCI protection such as kitchens where the receptacles are installed to serve the countertop surface. Here we are at 2020 NEC 210.8 a dwelling units. So we got all 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles installed in the location specified in 210.8 A1 through A11 and supplied by single phase branch circuits rated 150 volts or less to ground shall have ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel. So we got 11 items here we're going to list that need ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel. And here's our listing right here. They get down to six. It says kitchens where the receptacles are installed to serve the countertop surfaces. So that's what we're doing in our example. We're serving the countertop surfaces. So this shows that these receptacles need GFCI protection. And here we are at 210.12 arc fault circuit interrupter protection. Arc fault circuit interrupter protection shall be provided as required in 210.12 A, B, C, and D. The arc fault circuit interrupter shall be installed in a readily accessible location. Uh, dwelling units, okay, we're in a dwelling unit. It says all 120 volt single phase 15 and 20 amp branch circuits supplying outlets or devices installed in dwelling unit kitchens. Ta -da! Okay, so this establishes that we need AFCI protection in kitchens and uh, also family rooms, dining rooms, living rooms, parlors, library stands, bedrooms, sunrooms. Recreation rooms, closets, hallways, laundry areas, or similar rooms or areas shall be protected by any of the means described in 210.12a, 1 through 6. So we have listings here, 1 through 6. And here is number 4 on that list. It's the one that really pertains to us. Number 4, a listed outlet branch circuit type arc fault circuit interrupter installed at the first outlet on the branch circuit in combination with a listed branch circuit overcurrent protective device where all of the following conditions are met. A. The branch circuit wiring shall be continuous from the branch circuit overcurrent device to the outlet branch circuit arc fault circuit interrupter. B. The maximum length of the branch circuit wiring from the branch circuit overcurrent device to the first outlet shall not exceed 15.2 meters at 50 feet for 14 AWG conductor or 21.3 meters at 70 feet for a 12 AWG conductor. The first outlet box in the branch circuit shall be marked to indicate that it is the first outlet of the circuit. And D, the combination of the branch circuit over current device and outlet branch circuit AFCI shall be identified as meeting the requirements for a system combination type AFCI and shall be listed as such. These three outlet boxes represent an above the countertop kitchen circuit that needs to be protected by both AFCI and GFCI. You can identify all the devices on a particular circuit by turning off the circuit breaker and carefully checking to see what is no longer on. Our first task will be to find out which receptacle is the first one in the branch circuit. That is, we need to find out which box is the most upstream the way I do this is to turn off the circuit breaker, remove all the receptacles from the circuit and disconnect all the wires. I have turned off the circuit breaker, but the first thing I'm going to do is check for 
any live electricity in any of these boxes. And the first thing you do is take your voltage detector and test it on a live known circuit. And make sure that it works properly. And once you have tested it, then you uh, use it on the wires in the boxes. You check all the wires and make sure that none of them are live. So we have turned off the circuit breaker and double checked it with our voltage detector. Now the next thing we're going to do is find out which of these boxes is the most upstream. That is, which is the first box in the circuit. We need to know that because this goes in the first box on the circuit. So I have turned the electricity temporarily back on. I've put Woggle lever nuts on the ends of all the wires for safety. And I'm going to check and see where the hot energy is coming into the box. And it's right here. This is your line wire. This hot wire is called your line wire. Notice none of the other wires in any of the boxes are hot. That's because the electricity is coming into the first box on the circuit right here. So this is our first box. This is the most upstream box and this box is where we're going to put the AFCI GFCI receptacle. Also this cable coming into the box uh, which is 12-2 with ground must be continuous and it must not be over 70 feet in length by code. The next test I'm going to do is I'm going to check the voltage coming into this box and to see if we have good voltage to work with. So these Woggle lever nuts have a little port right here that you can put your tester in. And by the way, this is my Fluke 117 True RMS electrician's meter. And so you put one lead in one port and one lead in the other port and you can see that we have 120 120.3 volts AC. So we got a real nice voltage uh, coming in to the first box. And now I can test the ground as well. Uh, take the, the lead out of the neutral and I put it into the ground and I get 120.3 volts AC. So that means that we have an excellent ground as well. Now I have turned off the circuit breaker and I'm going to double check with my voltage detector to make sure that the electricity is off. Here's, I've marked the line wire. This is the one we found to be hot and you see it's it's not reading hot now, so that means that the circuit breaker is indeed off. The next test I'm going to do is to find out which box is the next box in the series. And I'm going to do that with my fluke electrician's meter. So I've put my meter on continuity, and I will put one lead right here on this black wire, and one lead on this black wire, and you can see it reads zero ohms, and there's a buzzer going off indicating continuity. I'll try that with the neutrals. We got that neutral and this neutral. Okay, and we got continuity again. So this cable right here is this cable right here. So that tells us that this is the next box in the series. And then I can make a test over here with this black and this black. And there goes the buzzer. So this is the third box in the series right here. So we got uh, this is the most upstream, this is the middle of the run, and this is the end of the run. Another way you can tell that this is the end of the run is there's only one cable coming into this box, whereas these two both have two cables. An end of the run box will always only have one cable coming into it. These leads span uh, four and a half feet each, so you can do this continuity test for nine feet with this meter and, and these leads. If you need to go longer distances, a good way to do it would be with a continuity tester like this. This is made by X-Tech. You just turn it on and we're going to put one lead on the black wire and one lead on the white wire. Uh, this is the second part of the continuity tester. We're going to put the red lead on the black wire and the black lead on the white wire. See, and we, we're showing continuity between this cable right here and this cable right here. Because this is the most upstream box, 
this is where we're going to be putting the AFCI, GFCI receptacle. The first thing we're going to do is get the grounds together. This is the ground coming from the line cable. This is the ground going over to the middle of the run box. This is the ground which bonds the metal box to the rest of the grounding system of the house. I'm going to use a Wago lever nut. This is a five connector Wago lever nut and I'll put one in there all the way like that, clamp it down, put the next one in there, clamp it down, put the next one in there, clamp it down, and then I have prepared a pigtail which is going to go to the receptacle itself. Now clamp that down. Now you can double check to make sure all your grounds are in all the way. Then I'll push the grounds back into the back of the box and I'll use this pigtail to attach the ground to the green terminal of the receptacle. Next I'll work on the neutrals and this is the line cable right here. This is the load cable. So I'm going to work on the line cable first. You see on the receptacle it says line right here and here is the silver terminal the white neutral line wire goes to the silver terminal on the line area. So I'm going to take this and I'll put it, put it right in here and I'm going to tighten it down securely. <clears throat> okay. Now here is the line hot wire. Again, we're on the line area of the receptacle. Put the line wire to the bronze terminal and tighten it securely. Okay, so we have the line wires hooked up on the line area, black to the bronze and white to the silver. Now we're going to take off this yellow tape. The yellow tape covers up the load. It says load. The yellow tape covers up the load area, so we just took off the yellow tape. Now I'll put the white neutral load wire to the silver load terminal and tighten it down securely. Now I'll take the black hot load wire and put it to the bronze load terminal and tighten it down securely. Now I'll take some black electrician's tape and wrap it around the receptacle a couple of times for safety. Now dress the wires, which means to put appropriate bends in the wires, put the receptacle in the box and tighten it down. Now we're going to move over to the second box and the first thing we're going to do is get the grounds together. This is a five connector Wago lever nut. We'll put one of the grounds right in there. Put the next ground right in there, click it down. This ground in here all the way, click it down. Okay, and I've prepared another pigtail here, click that down. So then we're going to take and push these back into the back of the box. And we push the grounds back into the back of the box, we have our pigtail ready to go. So we're going to take this green pigtail and put it around the green terminal of the middle receptacle, and crimp it, and tighten it down securely. Now we're going to get the neutrals together. Okay, we've got the neutral coming over from the first receptacle and the neutral going to the last receptacle. It's a three connector Wago lever nut this time. Push it in all the way, click it down, push it in all the way, click it down, and I have prepared a white neutral pigtail. Push it all the way and click it down and we're going to put these in the back of the box. Now I'm going to get the black hot wires together. This is another three connector Wago lever nut. Push it in all the way, click it down. Push it in all the way, click it down. And here I've prepared a pigtail to go to the receptacle and we'll click that down. And we push the hot wires into the back of the box. Now we have a white pigtail and a black pigtail. The white pigtail uh, goes 
to the side with the silver terminal and the longer of the slots. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right in there like that. The black wire goes to the bronze terminal right here and I'm going to tighten it down securely. Now I'll take a couple wraps of black electrician's tape and wrap it around the receptacle for safety. Now dress the wires, put the receptacle in the box and tighten it down. Now we'll move over to the last receptacle and first thing we're going to do is get the grounds together. We'll put one in there, click it down in the Wago lever net, put the second one in there, click it down. Now I have prepared a pigtail and click that down. So take these, push them into the back of the box. Now here's our next receptacle. We're going to take this green pigtail, put it around the green terminal, and tighten it down securely. I will take the white neutral wire, put it to the silver terminal, and tighten it down securely. I will take the black hot wire and put it to the bronze terminal and tighten it down securely. Now take a couple wraps of black electrician's tape and go around the receptacle a couple of times for safety. Now dress the wires, put the receptacle in the box and tighten it down. Now I'll put on the screwless wall plates. This is a backing plate. Then you take the screwless part and just snap it right on like that. Now we'll press reset and I'll we'll plug in my Sperry stop shot tester. You see there's one green light. That means it's correctly wired and correctly grounded. Now I'll press test. Okay, that worked great. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to go off like that. Now we'll move over to the second receptacle and you see we have one green light, so that's proper. Now we'll press test. And it went out, and now we're at the third receptacle. We'll press in the tester. We have one green light. That's correct, and we'll press test. The light goes out. And now since the first outlet has been proven to be the first outlet of the branch circuit, it receives the prestigious first outlet of branch circuit sticker. And the second outlet, having proved that it is an AFCI protected and GFCI protected outlet receives its stickers and the third receptacle receives the same stickers. Congratulations all around. These stickers are required by code. I'll put a link in my video description for the Leviton Smart Lock Pro AFCI GFCI tamper resistant outlet and I'll put a link for the Fluke 1AC voltage detector for Wago lever nuts in the 2, 3, and 5 conductor sizes, as well as the multi pack for the Fluke 117 electrician's multimeter, the Milwaukee 3 piece 1000 volt insulated screwdriver set for Leviton Decora Plus tamper resistant backwire receptacles and screwless wall plates. For the NEC codebook and the NEC handbook and the XTech wireless continuity tester. Thank you. I hope this video was helpful.